On the 18th of February 1930, the ninth planet of the solar system was officially discovered. Within days, news of this remarkable discovery had spread across the globe. And this was it. This is what they found. A tiny white speck among millions, even billions, of other tiny white specks. It was found by examining two photos taken a few days apart, in the hopes that one of these dots would have changed position in that time. And when this dot moved, just a few centimeters across a piece of paper, the search for Planet X, or Pluto as it would later be named, came to an end. Now that we knew that it existed, many started to wonder what does Pluto look like? Unfortunately for those alive at the time, it would take close to a century to truly answer that question, because these pixelated blobs were the only visuals of Pluto until 2015. Because in 2015, the probe New Horizons reached its destination and finally revealed Pluto to the world. It took nine years for the probe to traverse the solar system, and once it arrived, Pluto was not even classified as a planet anymore. Aside from capturing these beautiful close-up photos of the surface, we also got a detailed view of Pluto's moon Charon for the first time. But this is actually the second time this year, and in human history, that a spacecraft has visited a dwarf planet. In May of 2015, the probe Dawn entered orbit around the dwarf planet Ceres and took several detailed photos. 2015 marked the year for when everyone lost their collective minds when they simply could not decide whether or not this dress was blue and black or white and gold. The photo was first posted on Tumblr, and within the first week, over 10 million tweets had mentioned the dress. As a result of this indecisiveness, an actual study was conducted with over 1,000 people. The study found that 57% saw the dress as blue and black, and 30% saw it as white and gold. The rest saw blue-brown combination, or could simply switch between any of the different color combinations. Eventually, the dress turned out to be blue and black, and the lighting in the photo is what creates the illusion of a different color scheme. Other popular memes of 2015 includes parodies of Drake having a seizure in his music video Hotline Bling, the phrase Netflix and chill, unexpected John C a really intense motivational speech by Shia LaBeouf, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do, 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 do it, <laughs> and uh, why you always lying? Why the fuck you lying? Now, on the more terrible side of things, 2015 was unfortunately a year marked by a long list of major terror attacks and atrocities across the globe. On January the 7th, two gunmen attacked the French magazine publisher Charlie Hebdo in Paris. Twelve people in total were killed during the attack, and multiple attacks took place in the days that followed, killing another five people. The terror group Al-Qaeda later claimed to be responsible for the attack, and the motive was that the paper had featured controversial depictions of the Islamic prophet Muhammad. In at least slightly uplifting news, their attempt to suppress these publications had the complete opposite effect. Charlie Hebdo normally sold around 60,000 French-only copies, but the issue following the attacks sold almost 8 million copies in six languages. On March the 20th, four suicide bombers attacked several mosques in the city of Sana'a in Yemen. The attacks killed 142 people, and it's the deadliest terrorist attack in Yemen's history. The terror group Daesh later claimed responsibility for the attacks. On October the 10th, two suicide bombers detonated outside a railway station in the capital of Turkey. A total of 102 civilians lost their lives. No one's claimed responsibility for the attacks, but the perpetrators have suspected links to Daesh. On October the 31st, the Russian airliner Metrojet Flight 9268 disintegrated and crashed above Egypt shortly after takeoff. While the cause of the incident is not yet fully determined, it's strongly believed that a bomb was detonated aboard the plane and the terror group Daesh has since claimed responsibility. All 224 passengers and crew members died in the crash. On November the 13th, a series of coordinated terrorist attacks were carried out across Paris in France. 
several suicide bombings, mass shootings and a hostage situation at the Bataclan Theater resulted in a total of 130 fatalities. Daesh soon claimed responsibility for the attacks. A state of emergency was issued by the President of France and he described the attacks as an act of war. And it's no wonder, seeing as this is the deadliest attack on France since World War II. It's been a pretty great year for gay people across the globe as same-sex marriage is becoming more and more commonplace. Luxembourg were the first to legalize same-sex marriage in 2015 on the very first day. The president of Finland signed a same-sex marriage bill but it won't go into effect until 2017, making Finland the last of the Nordic countries to legalize same-sex marriage. Pitcairn Islands with a staggering population of 56... Yeah, that's it, 56, also legalized same-sex marriage. Ireland became the first country to legalize same-sex marriage by popular vote. Greenland's parliament unanimously voted for same-sex marriage, so that one guy in Greenland is probably screaming with joy right now. Yes! And same-sex marriage becomes legal nationwide in the United States. While water in the form of ice have been known to exist on Mars for quite some time, in 2015 NASA confirmed the evidence of liquid water. The recurring slope lineae, as it's called, is believed to be coming from underground pockets of salty water or brine. This time-lapse kinda speaks for itself. Liquid water appears to be coming out of the ground, creating these several hundred meter long streaks down the slopes. However, the exact source of the water and the mechanics behind its motion is not yet understood. On the 25th of April, an earthquake with a magnitude between 7.8 and 8.1 hit Nepal and surrounding nations. The quake took the lives of over 9,000 people, injuring more than 23,000 and causing around 5 billions in damages. It's the worst natural disaster to strike Nepal since 1934. The quake also triggered an avalanche on Mount Everest, killing at least 19, making it the deadliest day on the mountain in its history. Several hundreds of thousands of people were made homeless and India was one of the first nations to help its neighboring country, sending rescue troops within hours and donating over 1 billion. Many other nations and rescue organizations were quick to help out as well, but even now, many months after the thousands of aftershocks has finally stopped, the country is still in very bad shape. In 2015, paleontologists announced the discovery of a new species of human ancestors. Homo naledi, as the new species is called, could potentially be the oldest example of modern humankind ever discovered. The bones of at least 15 individuals was excavated from deep within a cave in South Africa, and they share features with both our own Homo genus and the more ape-like and older genus of Australopithecus possibly creating a crucial bridge between the two human genera and answering important questions about the evolution of humanity. If anything, this new discovery highlights just how much we don't know and that our understanding of human evolution is constantly evolving. Anniversaries are always fun, right? No? Anyone? Ten years ago, the dwarf planet Eris was discovered. Darth Sidious was elected as the new pope. YouTube was launched. A leap second was added. We all overestimated George Lucas's power for the third time. Batman begins. Narnia begins. Anonymous liked a movie. Colossus casted a shadow. And the Xbox 360 was released. Seventy years ago, World War II ended. 100 years ago, the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, or NACA, was founded and would later transform into NASA. Pluto is actually photographed for the first time, but no one realizes until 15 years later. Charlie Chaplin released The Tramp, which featured his most memorable on-screen character named The Tramp. Iceland gets a flag. Albert Einstein publishes his general theory of relativity. And finally, the first ever stop sign is erected in the city of Detroit in the US, and the reaction of the rest of the world is Hey, that's pretty good. And thus we all follow suit. 
2015 was also the year of the European refugee crisis. Millions of refugees from countries in the Middle East, Africa, South Asia and the Western Balkans began flooding into the European Union seeking asylum. Most of which originate from countries such as Syria, Afghanistan and Iraq. This major influx of refugees is mainly a result of the continued war and fighting against terror groups such as Daesh in the Middle East and Boko Haram in Africa. In the first nine months of 2015, over 800,000 asylum applications were submitted to the nations in the European Union, and the numbers keep growing. Some countries, such as Germany, Hungary, Sweden and Italy, has for the most part welcomed the refugees, while other nations have been a lot more restrictive. And while a global debate over what to do about the crisis has continued throughout the year, the crisis is likely to continue for quite some time. On December the 21st, SpaceX made history by successfully launching and landing its Falcon 9 rocket. I watched the live stream of the event and I've never been this excited about something I'm not even directly involved in. Like, just watch this. LZ-1, the Falcon has landed. Landing operators moving to procedure 11.100, section 3 on LZ-1 B net and recovery net. Repeat, the Falcon has landed. You know, it's like one of those ridiculous montage parodies, but you know, this time the excitement is actually valid. If you're not a space enthusiast like myself, then you may be wondering why a boring rocket is so damn important. So let me try to explain that. Even before the space age took off in the 1950s, space rocket engineers were adamant on building a reusable launch system. Reusability was the obvious, reasonable and affordable way to go. But when the Soviet Union launched Sputnik in 1957, the space race took center stage and that reasonable incremental approach was abandoned for the need to beat the Soviets at any cost. And cost it did. Building the same thing over and over is not very efficient. The Space Shuttle program was NASA's attempt to reduce costs with a partially reusable system, and while it was used for three decades, it ultimately turned out to be more expensive than disposable systems. In the interest of time, the bottom line here is that an affordable reusable launch system has so much more potential than a disposable system, and space agencies around the world have tried to achieve this goal for quite some time. And from the looks of it, that's exactly what SpaceX did only a few days ago. The 70 meter high Falcon 9 rocket launched into space, then the two stages of the rocket separated. The second stage containing the payload consisting of 11 satellites continued into space while the reusable first stage returned to land back on Earth. Within only 10 minutes of launch, it safely landed back on the ground. I mean, I was not around when the space industry was at its peak and man walked on the moon. I, I missed all of that. But this rocket, this launch and landing, it really made it seem as though we're heading back towards that time. And sure, it may just be another rocket, another launch, nothing special. But perhaps, just maybe, however optimistic it may be, Maybe this is just what we needed to reignite the space age.